Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. The next generation of consoles are here. And with these next generation consoles, we see several major pieces of tech being brought along for the ride. Hardware-based road tracing, next generation SSDs, which in my opinion are one of the bigger advancements in this generation. Just the ability to pull in huge quantities of data within just a split second means that games developers are free to basically rewrite the rules of how games can be designed. And of course, machine learning. Direct ML is what Microsoft are pushing for the Xbox Series S and X. But with this comes a lot of confusion exactly how Microsoft are implementing it in their consoles, with a lot of folks believing that Microsoft are actually utilizing tensor cores for the Xbox. So this is what we want to tackle in this video. And I just also want to point out that both the Series S and X have identical capabilities in terms of their instruction set and features. This means that the Series S, for example, has hardware-based ray tracing, mesh shaders, variable rate shading, as well as, well, machine learning operations, which in the case of the Xbox is 4 and 8-bit operations, which is for inference. And I've explained what the difference is between training and inference a couple of times before on the channel. So if you are familiar with this, you can skip forward a minute or so. However, if you're unfamiliar, basically training is where you're actually training the code initially and it's considerably more, well, computationally expensive. It takes quite a long time for AI to be able to do anything either remotely accurately or anything remotely complicated. So for example, if you want AI to be able to identify what a cat is, or perhaps you want to train AI to be able to paint in the style of Picasso, or you want it to be able to upsample from a lower resolution image, or create a opponent which is challenging for you in, say, a single player game. All of those things are things that Microsoft and other companies such as Nvidia have been really pushing, uh, you know, for games, and it's really cool. But once that tr code is trained, again, this is quite computationally expensive to train codes, and typically it's done on things like supercomputers. You can then run it on your home console or home GPU using inference, and inference is, well, again, nowhere near as taxing to achieve. And this, that is inference, is what the Series S and X are utilizing for Direct ML, which is the machine learning framework part of, well, just Direct X. And again, I'm keeping this as simple as possible for the video. It is quite a rabbit hole you can dive down for these topics. And as always, I would encourage you all to do your own research. So consider this video a jumping off point if you are more technically inclined. If not, this will give you a basic overview. So why do we know that the Series S and X do not have tensor cores? And what exactly is a tensor core? Because of course, that's an important discussion to have. Microsoft have detailed what the Series X and S are capable of pretty extensively, way more so than what Sony have for the PlayStation 5, which honestly is quite a mystery in several areas. I mean, there's a lot of rumors and speculation, but ultimately Microsoft have detailed way more than what Sony have. So, first of all, Microsoft started out uh, with a Eurogamer interview where they mentioned that one of the things they uh, wanted for the Series S and X was 4 and 8-bit operations, which are mostly used for inference, not training. Then we had things such as the Hot Chips conference, where Microsoft states that there was a small amount of die space required for the 4 and 8-bit operations on their GPU. Now, if we compare this to what NVIDIA have done for the RTX 3080, for example, we can see the block diagram with the RTX 3080, and then we drill down, drill down into the SM. The SM is basically a clump of different things, including RT cores, the actual CUDA cores of the, G, of the GPU, and also the tensor cores itself. And you can see that there's quite a lot of space taken up on the SM just from the CUDA core, sorry, for, from the tensor core alone. And depending on the number of SM means that, well, just in line, you will see an increase in the number of RT cores or number of tensor cores on the GPU. But I'm sure you'll agree that that eats up a lot of die space, which is something that you cannot really get away with on a console. Consoles have finite amount of die space available for multiple reasons, one of those being cost. The larger the die that you're creating, 
the more expensive it is because things like yields will start to become a problem. The Xbox Series S and X, for example, both have GPU cores or compute units to be accurate disabled. The Xbox Series X, for example, has 56 compute units with four of those being removed or turned off or disabled to use the correct term. And this means that Microsoft have a little bit of leeway if one, for example, of those compute units is damaged during the manufacture of the silicon itself. So Microsoft have decided that the best way of uh, adding machine learning slash inference on the GPU was the um, instructions that we're seeing here for an 8-bit operations. And this is actually identical to what we see with the desktop implementation of RDNA 2 as well. It's quite literally listed in the white paper as one of the major advancements from RDNA 1 to RDNA 2. So Microsoft basically have the same tech as the desktop implementation of RDNA. And this is perfect for things like upsampling from a lower resolution to a higher resolution. The Xbox Series X has 52 compute units which are active. And these compute units, of course, are responsible for a plethora of things, not least of which is just drawing the visuals on screen. But these CU are actually general purpose. And these same CU are what are responsible for the lower precision operations that we've been discussing, and again have been shown off in the RDNA2 white paper. In the other trick slide from Microsoft, ML Inference Acceleration for Games, very small area cost. Again, it's stating that it's inference, which is trained code, and it's a very small area for three to 10 times performance increase, depending again on what's being ran and code as well as other things. So this basically means that the lower precision operations are running on the general purpose compute units. Again, there are 52 but there are not separate accelerators on the GPU, such as tensor cores. So if we look at this white paper from NVIDIA themselves on what flavors the tensor cores are capable of, we can see that four and eight bit operations are listed under inference. So again, this is running trained code. This works almost identically anyway in principle to what RDNA 2 is capable of with its lower precision operations. Tensor cores can do a whole bunch of other stuff, which is more in line with training, but it's way outside the topic of this video and is not really what we're talking about with machine learning and the Xbox Series S and X. I also know that people are going to ask in the comments, well, what about the PlayStation 5? And honestly, no one 100% knows whether the PS5 does have these lower precision operations embedded in it. I've heard they, I've heard it does but I can't get any confirmation. And what we've seen recently is a report from one of um, Sony's own studios, Insomniac Games, that the PS5 is utilizing machine learning for one of its games, Spider-Man. However, they didn't actually disclose how ML was being ran. So we don't still know whether it was lower precision operations or whether it was something else entirely like FP16, which is half precision. Now, you can still run ML on this, it's just more computationally expensive. And again, I've gone much more extensively into that in that video, so I'll try to remember to link it in the video description. So what does all of this mean? It basically means that the Xbox Series X as well as S are really good at running this code when it's inference because that's ultimately what the console is trying to do. However, they do not have tensor cores embedded on them. Direct ML, however, and this is kind of part of another discussion as well, is a framework and direct ML can do a whole bunch of stuff, upsampling lower resolution images, it can do AI and a whole bunch of other really cool things. Direct ML is something that uh, Microsoft, of course, are pushing and it's their proprietary API. However, there are tons of other ways to run ML. For example, NVIDIA don't use direct ML at all for the LSS. Instead, they use their own frameworks, and DLSS, as I'm sure you'll know, is pretty damn impressive for upsampling from lower resolution. Sony, too, uh, assuming their GPU has lower precision operations, will most likely use, you know, its own frameworks. However, there are multiple ways to achieve different things, for example, upsampling 
um, with FSR is done rather differently to what NVIDIA's DLSS solution is. And I'll try to remember to link my FSR video in the video description as well if you're quite interested in that and how AMD's upsampling tech works. Although I suspect we'll get a much more in-depth announcement from AMD soon. They'll probably disclose it. And honestly, I'm very excited to see exactly what the quality and performance is like officially anyway from their tech. With all of that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, then of course, leave a like on the video and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.